Hey, welcome to the channel. In this quick review, I'm going to go over my thoughts on Bodycam and its current state of early access, while also taking a look at what's to come for the game in the future, and hopefully give you an answer to the question, does this game deserve my money? Bodycam was released into early access two weeks ago on Steam, and since its release has been a substantial success, selling thousands of copies. Bodycam is a multiplayer, hyper-realistic FPS that sells itself on its realistic graphics and feel, with the developers placing emphasis on the game's revolutionary shooting and movement experience. But how well does it meet these selling points? Starting off with the graphics, wow, does this game look good. The developers nailed the ultra-realistic style of the environments, weapons, players, and lighting. The game makes you feel like you're truly in a desolate house or abandoned oil rig where a threat could come from any angle. In addition, the game performs quite well in my experience and offers many options for balancing quality versus performance without sacrificing the realism of the experience. Moving on to the camera and shooting, the body cam viewpoint gives the game a unique feel while moving and aiming. The player character's body movements while peeking around corners and aiming down sights look and feel realistic, with smooth arm movements and camera sway that properly react to running and other movements. When it comes to the shooting in this game, I think it's going to be a love it or hate it situation depending on the player. In my opinion, it feels good and captures a realistic feel between the time required to re-aim a gun to a new position and the punchy audio of the gun's firing. In addition, the recoil feels realistic, but manageable, and you'll be able to properly aim and control your recoil after a bit of getting used to the unique feel of the game. Something about the aiming I should touch on is the fact that because of the camera, aiming down a scope versus iron sights doesn't really feel any different from one another, as you're not really looking down the scope when you have one. While I don't think this is expressly a negative thing, it's definitely something that's going to impact your opinion of the game's shooting. To end off the positive parts of early access, the atmosphere and audio of the game are amazing. The overpowering sound of guns firing in close quarters and the distant sounds of footsteps growing closer in the shadows keeps your eyes peeled to every inch of your screen while playing. The game pushes that oppressive feeling of nowhere being safe into your face and holds it there the entire time you play. While the game nails its realistic selling points, there are definitely some things that need to be improved. Primarily the game modes that are currently offered. As of now, there are three game modes in the game. These are Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, and Body Bomb. I'll go over two of these modes here, as I don't really think there's any problems with Team Deathmatch at the moment. And to preface this, I don't think any of the modes are inherently bad. I think they just require some changes to improve the experience. I'll start with the most simple mode, Deathmatch. This game's deathmatch suffers from one simple problem, spawn campers. There isn't any spawn protection and the game lacks a varied pool of spawn locations on the maps, leading to a lot of your deathmatch experience boiling down to spawn in, maybe get to look around for a second before immediately dying, and repeat. It's a problem that in my opinion they've got a few options to fix, whether they raise the number of spawn locations to make it less predictable or just add some form of spawn protection. Moving on to Body Bomb, this is a 6v6 game mode, where the teams spawn on opposite sides of the map, with one side spawning in with a player carrying a Body Bomb, which they activate and detonate to win, with the other side having to defuse the bomb to win. Of course, as per usual with a game mode like this, you can also just kill the other team to win. In general, this game mode is enjoyable, and it's my personal favorite of the three. However, there is one thing that I think needs to be changed, and that's the fact that the side with the bomb is able to plant it anywhere they want on the map without restriction. This can lead to one-sided exchanges where the bomb team either boxes themselves in spawn or in another almost impossible to push area, like this basement here. Also, sometimes the bomb just gets placed in a location that is literally impossible to defuse due to exploits in the map environments, which is extremely frustrating as the defusing side. Well, I'm unsure exactly how these issues could be addressed in the way that the game mode is structured right now, other than maybe a more traditional bomb site planning method like CSGO. I do hope they address some of the issues in the future. One very minor gripe I'd like to air is that trying to mantle just about anything is extremely annoying in this game, as your character consistently has a stroke when attempting to get on top of anything more than a foot tall. Another issue is that there currently isn't any way to check your ammo in your weapon without reloading, which has, in my experience, led to a couple unfortunate deaths. Another issue is with the drones that players become after death. Overall, these are fine, but still being able to use prox chat while a drone is a bit of an issue since it's not as fun when there's three enemy drones screaming your position out to the enemy. Lastly, the servers. This is a pretty straightforward complaint. Make dedicated servers. 
There's no reason that the only option should be player hosted servers, since that just provides a less reliable experience with host disconnections and the other problems that come along with those. While there's not that much to go off, since this game is only a few weeks old at this point, the developers have put out a 2024 roadmap with some promising content on the way. This includes the generally expected additions such as bug fixes, maps, and weapons, but also new game mode. The roadmap shows plans for a zombie game mode in quarter 3 of 2024. This is pretty exciting since the game's oppressive atmosphere and general tendency of getting the crap scared out of you by players emerging from the shadows should lend itself pretty well to a zombie mode, but as always we'll have to wait and see. The game's expected to remain in early access for a few years minimum. As of me uploading this video, the game is priced at 33 US dollars for early access, and after my time with this game, I would have to say that for a casual player, this is probably more than you're going to want to pay. While the technology behind the game is fun and the core gameplay is quite solid, it's still an early access game that needs a lot more time to really stretch its wings. All in all, this is a promising game that's priced a bit higher than most others in its development stage, but in the end, it's up to you. If you're interested in the game and want to support the development, or are looking for a fun time with friends, then I would say it's worth the purchase. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe as I've got more gaming content on the way. Have a great day.